Are you looking for somewhere to set up a second screen in your house or need somewhere else to watch TV or watch the games or even play your games consoles? Well, this could be the product just for you. This is the Nexago PJ40. Hi everyone, my name's Monty and welcome to Inside Wire. Today we're going to be taking a look at this 1080p projector. So let's go ahead and have a look what comes inside the box. Just before we do, let's have a quick look at the specifications. So a couple of things you want to point out. I mentioned 1080p. It has max resolution playback for local video playback at 4K. It has automatic keystones correction, so there's no manual adjustments. And the projector size is 50 inches all the way up to 300 inches. We'll have a look at the inputs and outputs shortly. And the speakers are 10 watts and there's two of them. So there is the projector and this is the packaging that comes inside the box. So we'll look at that shortly. The actual projector itself comes well protected. So a closer look at the projector itself. So we have the Nexigo logo on the front here and with an IR sensor. And on this side we have a lens cap, a nice silicon lens cap to make sure that doesn't get dusty. If we have a quick look at the top, we have a back home and power button and, your, and a wheel here to scroll the menu. On the back, this is where all the connections are. We have another IR sensor on the back, so depending on whether you're pointing the remote at the front or the back. AV connector, headphones, two HDMI 2.0 ports, two USB 2 ports, and a LAN port. We also have the power just here as well. Also inside the pack, you get the 1080p LCD user manual, so we have that. We have a spare filter. We have a lens cloth, so projector dust cloth, so if you need to wipe off the lens, you have one of those. Power, RCA, uh, I'm not quite sure how many people actually use this anymore, but these do seem to be quite common with the projectors. A set of batteries and the remote. So if we have a quick look at this bit just here, you can see that comes out. That's where the filter sits. So there's one that comes with it, but you'll also get a spare one as well. On the front also on here, you also have the focus wheel. So you can obviously play around with that depending, oh, that pushed out the lens cap. So depending on how you want that set up, you can have that adjusted just there. So that's enough of me talking about this projector just here. Let's go ahead and get it set up and see how well it works and what features it has. The projector is now plugged in and you can see that's on the screen just there. So we are in a dark room and that picture is fairly clear. Um, the fan is quite evident in terms of what you can hear, but I'm just gonna go silent for a second so you can hear the fan. And that goes to about 45 decibels, just so you're aware on there. So let's start by looking at what the input sources you can look at. So in terms of the input sources, we have the connections that I showed you earlier. So we have the HDMI, USB, we have a file manager, we have Miracast and iOS cast. So we will try the iOS cast shortly just for a demo. Uh, if I now go across to down to settings. So first let's start with the network. Let's go ahead and join a Wi-Fi network. So we've joined the Wi-Fi now and let's go ahead and look at the fan. So one thing I want to point out to you as I was looking at this earlier, you can actually manually select the fans. It doesn't actually do this automatically, but you can see if I bring the fan speed down, that fan is virtually quiet now. The, the brightness of the screen comes down. So if we go back up and you can hear that fan kicking in again. So we'll leave it around about eight. So let's go back. If we have a look at the projection, so we can have the different projection modes depending on how you have it mounted. We go back and this is the auto keystone. So we'll leave that in, there you go. That's done a pretty good job in terms of the auto keystone. I think that's done quite well. We have the zoom adjust, so we can go digitally zoom it. We can make it smaller and we can go up to 100% and then we go back. Um, we'll look at the update to see if there's an online update so there is a new update so we'll go ahead and let that download and do a system update and we'll come back once this is done right so that updates now complete so let's go ahead and put this projector to the test so we're going to go ahead and use ios cast so we'll go ahead and select that we want to use airplay so we can select that and then that takes us to this screen just here so what i'll quickly show you on here is we can go ahead and press screen mirroring which is just there and you can see the PJ40 is right there. So we'll go ahead and put that on. And you can see that's now mir mirroring. So first thing, let's go ahead and uh, test some YouTube. So let's open the YouTube app. 
So on this week's episode, it's time to say goodbye to Azure AD. That's that just there. Now I'm going to go back and quickly play some non-copyright music. Otherwise, this will get flagged and we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to play this just so you can hear the sound. And just so you can see the decibels, I'll go ahead and play that again. So here we are, we're now screen mirroring from our iPad and playing a game just to show you how well this works on here as well. And there's hardly any delay on this as well, so this looks quite good and it's fairly real time in terms of the video. As you can see from the demo, this works perfectly well. So whether you use this in the day and the night, the 700 lumens really shows through. What do I think of this projector overall? Well, for less than $300, it does a really good job. Yes, the fan is a little bit on the loud side, but actually the speakers do compensate for it. So if you are using the speakers on board, it's not something you can hear while you're listening to something on the projector. In terms of the inputs, it has multiple inputs for the HDMI and USB and RCA ports, but also the Miracast does help quite well as well. So whether you're using an Android phone or an iPhone, you can go ahead and cast straight to this unit. The link is down in the description below and I hope you found this video useful. Do remember to like and leave me a comment down below what you think of this projector right here. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.